I'll tell you what tools and materials are necessary to modify the engine. I used a 1.5 kilowatt AC motor for this project, but you can use any type of motor, bigger or smaller, if you follow the same steps. I modified the core into a workshop in order to put the magnets on the rotor. Now we will need an AC motor. Bigger is better, but you'll also need a bigger source of power to spin it. Everything is in direct proportion with the size of the coil and the power of the magnets that you will use. I used neodym magnets and you can buy them online. Take a look at your screen for the websites where you can find these magnets. Now based on the size of the rotor that your motor will have, you'll need to divide it and see how many magnets you can put in. This next video image should help you understand better what I'm talking about. As you can see, I made canals for the magnets, and they're laid out in this way, north on one side and south on the opposite side. The canals were made in a workshop in order to section the rotor perfectly. This cost me $12, because initially I tried to make them using an angle grinder, but it didn't work very well. You will need a 6.3 inch or 16 centimeter in diameter PVC pipe and 60 inches or 150 centimeters long. You will need an angle grinder to cut the pipe, aluminum profile and screws, a drill and some drill bits. Those are the basic things to start with. I'll show in the video the tools that I use to accomplish this project. I've already disassembled the motor because we want to assemble it together. Here you can see the modified rotor with the magnets already in place. The reason that we place the magnets is that we've made some tests to see which method will keep them secured in place. This is the magnet that we used on the rotor, a neodym magnet N40 46 by 30 by 10 millimeter. Those are the lids that are going to be attached to both sides of the motor when we close it and keep the rotor aligned. Here you can see the system that we've made to keep the magnets in place. Basically, I used a piece of bended steel and some screws. I'll highlight them later on. What you need is a piece of steel. The width will be equal to the magnet's height, depending on how you align them. Now in my case, the width of the steel is five centimeters. Be careful when you handle magnets because they're very powerful and you should probably wear gloves. Use a marker to draw a line where the steel should be bent. I'm using two pieces of L aluminum profile to extend the jaws of my vise to make sure that I'll get straight corners. I'm also using a small hand vise on the other hand to tighten the profile on both ends. Bend the piece and use the hammer to flatten the corners. Draw the next line where the piece needs to be bent again. Tighten the piece on the vise 
and bend it again. Now, mark the magnet's thickness. In my case, it's 10 millimeters. Measure the space between magnets, draw that on the piece of steel and bend it again. Make a full 90 degree angle using this tool. Draw the start line for the second magnet and bend the piece. Now draw the last line and bend it over to form the final piece. Measure the sides and then cut the piece to the length that you'll...